praise the Lord. It's my pleasure to, to be here today and to welcome every one of us to this uh, family fellowship again. I recognize the presence of some of our senior colleagues and professors from ARTSU. I could also see some of our senior academics from Federal Poly and other institutions around. And uh, you are all welcome in Jesus' name. All our students and non-students from the three campuses around Mubi here, you are welcome to this uh, program. Well, we have been here since morning. We had decided the scriptures, we had seminars, and we just want to round up with a very short message. And uh, by the grace of God, we are not going to take much of your time as we look at this important subject, which I've been talking about since morning, and it's good to uh, emphasize on it. And I'm speaking to you today. Grace for victory over campus peculiar temptation. Grace for victory over campus peculiar temptation. I'll be talking about temptation, when there are temptations that are peculiar to every sector, every segment of society. Traders, the market, farmers, and the food, they have their own peculiar temptations. But here in the campus world, there are peculiar temptations, which is, uh, which often you know, bring down many vibrant and promising believers. But today, I talk about grace. Grace for victory. Our emphasis is on that grace. Because if you begin to look at temptation, 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 you will think it is insurmountable. But above that, look at grace. Grace for victory. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There has no temptation taking you but such as it's common to man. That tells us something. But God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not suffer you, allow you to be tempted above that you are able. But he will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. You will escape in Jesus' name. Now, from that the first part of that verse, there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. That is telling us that temptation is real, and it often comes to every man, saints or sinners, old or young, staff or students. Temptation is common to all men, and temptation itself is not sin. It is when one yields to temptation that he has committed sin. Or well, many people yield, to, yield easily to temptation today because they are void or ignorant of the grace of God. And when there is no grace, as somebody said, in the absence of grace lead to disgrace. Where there is no grace, it will lead to disgrace. You see two people in the hostel exchanging words. Uh, if Sister A has grace over Sister B, the other one, will, she will just say, because of your water, I will, she will take the bucket and fetch another one for her. But if there is no grace, she said, you use my water and you are still talking, before you know what is happening, disgrace, fight has come. So the absence of grace leads to what? Disgrace. And people will say, ah, we saw so and so fighting, this sister and that sister, they are fighting in the hostel, disgrace has come. Because of what? absence of you will get grace this morning so many people get into temptation because of lack of grace jesus the captain of our salvation was also tempted and he did not yield he overcame because he overcame you also overcome now i'm not going to focus on temptation per se but 
let's focus on the grace because temptation is like birds flying they will always fly but you will always prevent them from making their nest on your head so believers we will receive grace to overcome this moment coming back to the campus the camp temporary campus dweller or community members are faced with a lot of pressures and temptations today and in fact it is more difficult to be, live a victorious campus dweller in these decades than those who went to school uh, those days you know the temptation then was not as generated as that of today but whatever the situation is you will still overcome a lot of pressure and temptations abound the campus itself is a permissive environment a permissive environment where you can do anything where there is freedom of everything freedom of sin freedom to associate freedom to talk freedom to fight everything is just free everything and where there is freedom unlimited it will lead to bondage at the end so because of this nature of the campus community it makes many people susceptible to temptation especially those who are believers it makes them susceptible to temptation every moment in the lecture room almost everywhere temptation abound the campus today portrays various forms of degrading fashion such as nudity you see people almost walking naked such are the characteristics of people in our campuses today in decent dressing is the order of the day what else do we see partying dancing entertainment those are the things that are going on fashion parade only music corrupt films occultism drug addiction these are the things that are trending today in the campus community above that we also have what we call modern christianity modern christianity that is void of the truth is just what we call pseudo christianity the name of just gathering together promoting sin and lewdness Christianity that will not carry away fornication from them. Let's just gather together. They will call it modern gospel. Modern gospel, that you say, well, anything that you can do, once you say you are born again, you say you are born again, you say you are born again, you are born again. And many people are being deceived. You will not be deceived in Jesus' name. We will be talking about just three things. Number one, varieties of campus peculiar temptation. Varieties of campus peculiar temptation. Number two, we we'll look at victims and valiants of temptations in the scriptures. People that are victims and those that are valiants, we will examine them in the scriptures. And you will pitch your tent where you belong to. And finally, we we'll look at victory. That's where you are going to. Victory over temptation through grace. Victory over temptation through grace. Let's go back to point number one. Varieties of campus peculiar temptations. I told you before. There are peculiar temptations in the campus community. Either to the students, the staffs, the old or the young. We'll look at some of them briefly before we move ahead. Let's look at number one. The area of fornication and immoral relationship. Temptation bordering on fornication and immoral relationship. When we say something is immoral, that means it's against morality. Because the society knows what is immoral. When something is immoral, it's against the norm. And that is the common source of temptation today. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. That happened in the wilderness. They were tempted, and then they fell, they committed fornication. Look at the calamity and the casualty. They have fell in one day. Three and twenty thousand people. Twenty-three thousand people died as a result of immorality. Fornication, immorality. Is one of the ways Satan is bringing down many people today. Victims of boy friendship, girl friendship, and all kinds of questionable relationship. And when you come to a church like this, and people are bringing this type of of relationship they are bringing it into the assembly of believers you will be surprised some people are exchanging notes in a place like this where they are singing beautifully like this and people are still practicing don't let anybody know believe me my friend and then you start meeting in that place that is why we say pressure from outside 
Sometimes it's on the road, you see students hugging themselves. Those of you who are new students, you'll be surprised because you cannot do this in your junior school or senior secondary school. And some people will tell you, you don't know where you are now, you are in the university. Well, that is the nature of the environment. But no matter the environment, when you have the grace of God, you will be able to live above those situations and circumstances in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 2 verse 14. Revelation chapter 2 verse 14. Talking about immoral relationship as sources of temptations in the campus. Revelation chapter 2 verse 14. But I have a few things against thee. God is looking at this fellowship, Arsu, Poli, and uh, other places where he came from. And he's saying, well, you are doing well, but I have something against thee. Because that was there, them that had all the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balaam, Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat in sacrifice unto idols and to commit fornication. That was what happened in the book of Corinthians, where I read for you before. There was something that counseled the king. You want to cast these people? Just allow your women to be passing by their side, dressing half naked, and then they, will be smile, they should be smiling and they, and they will entice them. And they did that. What they cannot achieve with gun, they achieved through fornication. 23,000 people died in one day, in one day, because of the sin and temptation of immorality. So we have to be very watchful and vigilant as you are going about unbelievers are there, even within the church, even within the fellowship, you have to be vigilant. So that brother that asked the, the question, can a believer be a source of temptation? Of course, of course. And the answer is yes. How do you explain that? You see, when the choir master is making eye to that sister in the choir, and he's sending text to her, and he's telling her, let us meet at the park of uh, multipurpose by 9 p.m. Ah, uh, 9 p.m.? Are you having a practice in that place? <laughs> so that choir master now, that is a source of temptation already. Recently, this happened in one of our campuses. Ah, choir masters. When I say choir masters, I have facts and figures. So choir masters, be very careful. Ah, the choir master said, I, I, I just like you. And, and then he began to talk to the choir members. And that's how the script got leaked out. And we said, choir master, is that true? So, temptation. That choir master now has become a source of temptation. So a believer can be a source of temptation. That is why... We are saying, don't be a stumbling block in the way of other people. Fornication, then unequal yoke with unbelievers. This is another variety of source of temptation on the campus. Who is your friend or who are your friends? Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Unequal yoke is another source of temptation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. So unequal yoke will mean that you are getting too close to people. Yes, we prevent everybody for the purpose of sharing the gospel. But when you are getting too close to unbelievers, people that don't share the same spiritual belief with you, then gradually temptation will come. And they will say, let us go. And you say, where? They will say, just follow me. And before you, find, you discover, you find yourself in the off-campus hostels. And the guests are already there, ready to entertain their visitors. And you say, ah, this is what you bring me. Just sit down, my friend. Shall we do our fellowship today? And then you sit down. Now, and that is what you call your already. It can lead to temptation. Then, introduction to strange fire. This is another source of temptation. Introduction to strange worship and prayers. Many people today are easy to go and do one kind of worship and prayer somewhere. So somebody is doing one prayer over there. What kind of prayer is this? That you cannot pray in the house of God. And uh, that type of prayer, they are using pure water. And then, they will sprinkle pure water. And we say... Uh, we learn you are going to that prayer, and you say, yes, their prayer is very hot. And another day, maybe we ask and say, how do they pray there? And we send someone, somebody to go and spy. And then he said, oh, brothers hold sisters' hands. Why do you hold sisters' hands? When brothers hold sisters' hands, they generate much power. <laughs> eh? You see? That, 
Why are you holding sister? They said, brother, hold sister. Brother, don't hold brother. Brother, hold sister. That is temptation. You are holding the hand of a lady every day. You want to go to that prayer meeting again, bro? So, these are some of the things that, you know, are happening. Are happening in life. And somebody is doing one prayer there. And then, we don't see you in the fellowship again. Uh, some will say, uh, they will not come to choir again because they still want to attend that prayer again. It's happening in many campuses. I pray, I hope it's not happening here. It will not happen in Jesus' name. But th these are the sources of temptations. Uh, we also have another source of temptation, such as covetousness and love of money. When people are in love of money, uh, another thing is social media. The social media today has increased the rate and the magnitude of, of temptation that young people are facing today. When you open it like this, and you cannot discipline yourself, on that spot alone, you can fall into diverse temptation, pornographic side. You see? So some students begin to confess, ah, this is happening to me, I'm having a spiritual problem. What is happening? Well, they are already falling into the sin of pornography. So where do you get it? In those days, before you can get pornography, you have to go and buy those magazines and those books of pornography. But today, it's already inside your tablet or smartphone. And you see now, social media making life easy and making sin also easy, but you will not fall in Jesus' name. And then, right there, you'll be committing sin on your bed with yourself alone. Another source of temptation is examination malpractice. Examination malpractice. And when they publish the list, and you look at the list, and you see those people that are going to that prayer on the football field, maybe James, John, are those that are committing the grammar practice, those that I expelled. And now they are falling into the temptation of examination and practice. The temptation of examination and practice is very common because many people are not reading and they want to pass, starting from ordinary tests in the class, even assignment, as our teacher told us this morning. Many people. They don't want to do assignment. The last day to the submission of the assignment, they will be saying, the man is coming today, the man is coming today. Oh, wait, let me see you on. And then, uh, especially when you ask them to type. If you ask them to type, as for final year students, do you know what I see? Somebody will just remove the cover of the other person and will bring the same thing. And I will just laugh. Uh, I will say, look at you. That's my practice already. Because of laziness to sit down and do your own work to study. Punishment will not come. We will not know who, who is the original owner. So I will say, okay, all of you, you either are the original owner of the assignment or and those who copy from you, you all fall into the same punishment. So that is the area of examination and practice. So examination and practice is becoming a very serious problem. And Christians should not be found in that temptation. If you are reading, read clear. And don't forget anything. How can you forget something incriminating in your pocket and say, I forget? Don't be tempted to that level. As if that is not enough, there's also marriage malpractice. Marriage malpractice, maybe it's a carryover from the examination malpractice. You see, there's a procedure of getting married, and we are encouraging you to get married as you are getting to your final year. But you see, students today have brought in malpractice of exams into marriage. How do they do that? They say, if you go to the pastor, don't tell them I've spoken to you. And the pastor asks you, has brother Samuel spoken to you? No, he has not. He has not. That's marriage and practice. Now, you have met the sister and you have said, do you want to marry me? You have already seen the answer before the exams. Because the exam is that you should go and pray. And then let God reveal to you. Before the committee or the pastor will ask you to go and pray. You have already gone to, to the lady. You have spoken to her already. That is my practice. This is becoming an issue today. And maybe when you get to the marriage committee and uh, perhaps the Spirit of God taught you and you, at that time they will ask you, have you spoken to her? And you say, yes, I've spoken to her. But now you already know that this your marriage has been founded on, on what? My practice. You have reduced your integrity. Even though they may allow you to continue your courtship, but you have reduced your integrity. This your marriage is founded on malpractice. May God deliver you from that in Jesus' name. So it's a serious matter. Don't play over it. We don't do it like that. You think they'll just tell you, go and pray. It's more than that. We have to say, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? 
So you have to be very careful about the foundation you are laying. Those who do examination or practice, they may get good results, but they cannot perform. You ask them to do, uh, how, do they, how do you get this paper? And you cannot solve this simple problem. May God deliver you in Jesus' name. Another thing is worldliness and worldly pressure. First John chapter 2, verse 15. These are some of the temptations facing the campus believers today. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why do people dress and think like the world? And the latest thing they are doing now is to cut this shoulder, maybe the back and the chest. Then why don't you remove everything there? It is the love of the world if you are doing it, dressing for people to see you. And the loss of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the loss thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You will do the will of God. You see, some of these things, the fashion of 2010 is no longer here. The fashion of 2015, they are no longer using it today. The fashion of 2020, they are not using it today. So why are you tempted to copy them? Some of you, when you see people in your lecture hall, instead of them to come and copy you, and you, you are copying them. I saw that girl, how she dressed, and you are following into temptation already, and you are dressing like those you see in your lecture, lecture, lecture hall. So now you begin to cut the back of your shirt, and you are exposing your shoulder and your chest, that's temptation already. You'll be delivered in Jesus' name. Another source of temptation is internet fraud. Many people are into internet fraud because they want to get rich quick. These are the sources of temptation. Sources of temptation facing the campus believers today. Another one is the desire to join modern gospel Christianity. How is it? They will just dance and dance from the fellowship Brother and sister will hold their hand and go to the hostel, and then the sister will be cooking for a brother. And they'll be going for that prayer from prayer meeting, brother and sister. And their lives are not right because they are not founded on the solid rock. And they'll be telling us that our own is too much. They will stop coming to our fellowship. Temptation, you, you know, fall in Jesus' name. Point number two quickly victim and valiance. When you say somebody is a victim, it's someone that has failed. But when you say somebody is a valiant, it's someone that has prevailed. Someone that is a hero, you'll be a valiant. The devil used so many things and circumstances to train people today. As I've said, uh, he came through the corruption of the woman. Many people in the Old Testament have been tempted. That's why I read to you. And uh, don't think you are the only one being tempted. Temptation is common to man. Some fell and some overcame. Those who fell the temptation are referred to as the victim. But those who resisted and overcame are the valiants. So now you begin to decide where you want to be. You'll be a valiant for the Lord. Amen. So let me just take you through from Genesis. Let's look at some of the victims. Those who fell into sin. Look at Genesis chapter 3. We will see those who fell into the temptation and those who fell into sin. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, how God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, Ye may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the trees which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So if after this statement she has lived in said they will and say bye bye Satan, go away. She have already given him the correct answer. If she would have stopped the conversation at that point, that would have been great. Or she would have said, excuse me now, that would be over. But the devil prolonged the conversation, and the serpent said unto her, he shall not surely die. The God said he will die. And the serpent said, he shall not die. Now, who is telling the truth? You see? It's like today, if we say, it, it is said that if you are caught in examination or practice, you will be expelled. And 
Next semester, you see some, you still see some people coming to examination and practice. What is happening? Something is telling them that you will not be caught. You will not be caught. Just do it. That is what happened here. If she had stopped the conversation at verse three, it would have been temptation overcome. Because they prolonged the conversation to verse four, five. Eventually, she was overwhelmed by the sweet mouth of the serpent. And at the point of collecting and eating, she had fell, fell into sin. Not only that, she put a stumbling block in the sight of her husband. So she became a victim of temptation. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. In Genesis chapter 25, verse 29. And Jacob saw portage, and Israel came from the field, and he was faint. And Israel said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red portage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Israel said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Israel bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. Thus Israel despised his birthright. You will not sell your birthright. Because of Marx, ladies sell their birthright. Well, I've been carrying this course over. And uh, I don't want to fail. Uh, I want to graduate this year. And the lecturer said, well, will you sleep with me? Huh? What concern me? Yeah, I want to go to your service this year. I don't, I don't care. OK, meet me in such and such a place. And because of that, many sold their birthright. Many also sell their birthright because of money. Today, men selling their birthright. What is your birthright? Salvation is your birthright. And you forget about salvation. You forget about this church, church something. And before you know what's happening, you are gone. You know, say your birthright, you know, say your salvation. It's what fell. It's what fell because of food. Let's look at another individual. In 2 Samuel chapter 11. 2 Samuel chapter 11. 2 Samuel chapter 11 from verse 1, talking about King David. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. Temptation comes when you are in the wrong place. When you're supposed to be somewhere and you are not there. Maybe when it is time for workers' meeting and you are in the hostel. And uh, what are you doing? Well, I just want to rest today. I just want to do an assignment. And then you say for your classmate, a lady, to come. So that I can do the assignment together at the time of focus meeting. And then something led to something. And then we don't know how, but something just happened. You, when you read Bible, read very well. At the time, king's supposed to go to battle. By now, David supposed to be the one commanding in the battlefront. But he stayed back at home. And Satan used a temptation to destroy him at this hour. And it came to pass. And an even tried that David rose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of his, the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. Morality committed. He fell into this temptation within seconds. Immorality committed. The time is supposed to be in the fellowship on Sundays. So people say, well, ah, maybe when they ask you, why are you not in church? Well, I woke up late. I was looking for water. And uh, from that time, some of your friends came and said, Eskoso Subarama. And uh, you went. And then you, when you went, and something happened there. <laughs> because you are not in the right place. So you, have to, you have to be very careful. When you're supposed to be somewhere, make sure you are there. That was how this man fell into temptation. And that thing affected his family forever. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We are looking at the victims, those who felt temptations, so that you can learn. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lost it. 
neither be idolatrous as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. You see, these people were just in the wilderness, going into the promised land, and then they found a place and relaxed. Because of that relaxation, the people of the land led them into temptation. You see, sometimes maybe someone said, GC, I don't want to be a worker this, this semester. Uh, why? I just want to relax and have some time of rest. These people, they rose up to play, uh, to relax, to rest. And the Bible said they fell into sin. Thank God, not all the people that were tempted succumbed into temptation. And that is the category you want to belong to. We call this one the valiant. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 35, the valiant. Those who overcome temptation gallantly, they didn't fall. Jeremiah chapter 35 verse 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord in the day of Joachim, the son of Joash, king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habazaniah, and his brethren, and all his house, sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites, and I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Agadaliah, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, which was above the chamber of Marsaiah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the door. And I set before the sons of the house of Rechab, Rechabites, pots full of wine and cups. And I said unto them, Drink ye wine. This is temptation to them already. But they said, No. But they said, We will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, You shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. For how long? Forever. Man of God, we respect you, we honor you, but our father, but our father has commanded us, and the commandment came from our forefathers, our fathers. I pray that you keep the faith of your forefathers in Jesus' name. And that is what we are preaching to the youth of this church. Those people that founded the deeper life, the deeper life of 70s, people that are seriously contending for the faith. And so these people are saying, our father said, no argument. We know you, we are Jeremiah, you are Jeremiah, but we don't know where you are getting this, your revelation. But our father said, and because of what their father said, they did not succumb. They overcame. You will overcome in Jesus' name. So I put it this way. These people remembered the word of their fathers and they reaffirmed it. So anytime temptation comes your way, you should remember the word of God and reaffirm it. The word of God said, I shall not do this. I shall not sin. I shall not steal. I shall not lie. I shall not. You just walk with the word of God. That's how they overcame and you will overcome. We also have Joseph. In Genesis chapter 39 verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, Lie with me. Can you see? The woman now was pursuing her start after Joseph. She saw him a handsome young man and she wanted to wreck the ministry of Joseph. There are people like that. They'll be following after you. They will call it GC, GC, Kaimasta, Kaimasta, class F. Be careful of those ladies. They are following you about. Like Potiphar's wife. And they'll be telling you, Lie with me. Come with me. Eat my food. But he refuse. You refuse. But he refused. I will read that place again. But he refused. Say, I will refuse. That is it. That word refused. But he refused. But he refused. And said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master, master wanted not what is with me in the house, and he had committed all that he had to my house. There is none greater in this house than I, neither had he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Can you see? You see, he thinks so, that wickedness is when people carry gun and go to a village and kill people. No, Joseph said committing immorality is wickedness. In fact, Joseph said it is a great wickedness. Committing abortion is a great wickedness. You think it's only those that carry the gun or go and burn a village that are wicked? No, that's wickedness. Or even committing immorality is also wickedness. It has magnitude as those that went and burned the village. God will deliver you from that. In Jesus' name. It is wickedness. When you are fumbling with a wife, uh, when you are fumbling with someone's wife, or fumbling with a lady that is not a wife, that's wickedness. When we read the Bible, let's read it very well. He said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Joseph refused. You will refuse. Joseph resisted and 
is another thing he did in verse 12. And she caught him by his garments, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Joseph refused, Joseph resisted, and Joseph ran. You see these three R's. He refused, he rejected, and he ran. Sometimes you may need to run from that place. Somebody said, uh, meet me at the back of multipurpose. And, and when you get there, and he begins to begins to touch you, begins to touch your different body parts, what do you do? You run. You run. When he ran, he lost his garments, but he saved his soul. He, he, he lost his coat, but he saved his soul. Well, as you are running from that person, you may lose your scarf, and he catches your scarf, and you run away and leave the scarf, and he sees your scarf, and then he, he said, maybe you come and collect your scarf. Uh, you get another scarf in the market now. Amen? So he resisted, he refused, and he ran. And what? So you may need to add this to your life. You run from a temptation, from any source of temptation. Let's look at another, another valiant. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. When you reject the food of Satan, you'll overcome. Daniel rejected and he was resolute. He rejected and he was resolute. The last person before we go to point number three, is Moses. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24, sorry. By faith, when he was come to years, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I believe if there's any word you are adding to your vocabulary, if there's any word you are adding to your vocabulary today, is what, which word? Which word? Refused. Joseph refused. Moses refused. To be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He had the opportunity to inherit that woman as her adopted son. For him to become the next Pharaoh by the virtue of the land. But he refused. That became a source of temptation to him. He refused and relied on God. So Moses refused and refused and relied on God. And eventually he became a leader of God's people. He received grace to refuse temptation in Jesus' name. So point number three. Victory over temptation through grace. We have seen the varieties of temptation. We have seen the victims. Now what we need is grace. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It says, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in witness. So we need to pray for grace from God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. You are getting that grace today. Jude chapter 1 verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. So the grace of God is what you need so that you will overcome all temptations. To overcome the temptation, to overcome the tempter, these are the things you need. One, hide the word of God in your heart. The word of God should be your guide all the time. Number two, reject every temptation by the written word. Jesus himself used the word of God. He said, thou shalt not sin, for it is written. Thou shalt not do this. Man shall not live by bread alone. So when you face someone that is trying to tempt you, resist him. James chapter 4 verse 7, resist the devil and he will do what? He will free. So, that is what I told you in terms of Eve. When the devil came to her, he should have said, Mr. Man, excuse me, I'm quitting at the back, I'm doing one thing, excuse me. That would have been the end of the temptation. But when you are still answering questions, you are still entertaining the tempter. You are still, you know, doing something good to the tempter. Resist the devil and he will flee. Number four, renounce every suggestion to sin. Then remain watchful and prayerful. First Peter chapter 5. Be vigilant, be sober. Have sober reflection. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be vigilant, be sober, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Apart from that, run from the tempter. Never be presumptuous. We read about Joseph. 
he ran. If it will take you to, take, to run physically, you run. If it will take you to run socially, you run. If it will take you to, take, to, to run by cutting off someone's relationship, maybe you see someone sending some texts to you, questionable texts, block that line. And maybe when he sees you physically, he says, I've been calling your line and he's not going. Well, that is another form of running. You're running away from him. So you can run by cutting away someone's relationship. And then refrain from idleness. An idle hand is the devil's workshop. That was what happened to David. Maybe sometimes you want to you will tell the GC, I don't want to be a worker. Why don't you want to be a worker? I want to be free. You want to be free? So you come to church when you like. You come to church when, you, when they are in point three. And maybe when they ask you at home, did you come to church? Yes, I, I came. But you just came late. So don't be idle. Remember to always put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. Then you should renew your consecration daily. Renew your consecration daily. And rely completely on God's grace. Rely on the grace of God. Look at Titus chapter 2 verse 11. The grace of God. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men. The grace of God is universal, is comprehensive, teaching us denying that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. The challenge before you today is to dare to be a Daniel in Babylon. Babylon was like this camp, the, the campus environment you are in presently. And you say, what kind of place is this? This is not like Jerusalem, where you have synagogue. Babylon is not like Jerusalem, where you have synagogue. There is just dancing, partying, idols, and those are the things you have in this, in this campus, campus environment. Everybody is doing what he likes. But Daniel survived the temptations in Babylon. You will survive the temptations in the campus in Jesus' name. But what was the secret? Daniel purposed in his heart. He was determined. So be determined in your heart that I will not fall. I will not yield. I will not be a victim. Uh, can somebody say that? Say, I will not be a victim of temptation. But rather, I will be a valiant. And it will be so in Jesus' name. So, as we conclude, with Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You say, somebody asked a question. Uh, in a, when we were in, I think, in a youth program, and he he read a place that said, love covers multitude of sin. So does that mean if you have love, we can be committing sin? Since cover, love covers multitude of sin? Uh, is that, shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? What's the answer? What's the answer? God forbid. So this morning, you will not go back into sin. Shall we continue in sin? You see? We, are, we, we ought to talk about grace, but shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What is the answer? God forbid. And that is why you also have to say, God forbid, I will not continue in sin. I say you will not continue in sin. Yes. Don't believe people that say, you cannot be free from sin. Why should you not be free from sin? Like if somebody say, saying, you cannot get A. You cannot get A in, your, in any course. Is that true? Eh? Yeah. If, if you cannot get A, there will be no A. Yeah? So if you, I, I'm challenging you now. If you have never gotten A in your scores, then you should go back and say, ah, is, it, is it that it's impossible for me to get A? It's possible. So go and study and get A. So it is possible for you to be free from sin. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What is the answer? Everybody, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in, in it? You will not live in sin. Today will be a turning point in your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet as we go before the Lord in prayers. Let's be on our feet. Let's thank God for the grace of God. Temptation abound, but grace much more abound. The Bible says, where sin abound, grace abound much, much more. Thank God for the grace of God. Look at the song we sang. Grace greater than our sins. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace. The grace of God. The grace of God is unfailing. The grace of God is available for you today. The grace to overcome. You will not fall. You will not faint. You will not falter. You will not be a victim. You will be a victor. In Jesus' name we pray.
and peradventure if you have fallen into temptation and sin, today God will forgive you. And he will forgive you and give you the grace to go and sin no more. So I want you to lift up your hands. If you have fallen into temptation, I want you to talk to the Lord, ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you, ask him to cleanse you from all the stains and all the sores and all the injuries you have gotten through those temptations. Pray and say, Lord, help me, make me a victor, transform me from being a victim to a victor. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And so, Lord, we thank you because of your goodness. Thank you because of your mercies. Thank you because of the sacrifice of Christ on Calvary. I pray that as everyone has listened to this word, you will make them to be consistent, victors, valiant in Jesus' name. The grace to continue without falling. The grace to continue overcoming temptations. Help us, Lord, to have. Help us to remember these words and do them. Help us to teach others these words. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.